So this is a short story called Village Square. The bench sat in front of the general store at the crossing where Swine Hill branched off from High Street. Although the branching formed a grassy triangle, everyone called it a square, a place where calmness reigned six days out of the week. The occasional car or bicycle passing by, scarcely noticing the ancient obelisk that stood in the middle of the village. Anne sat on the bench, the only illumination coming from the impossibly distant stars overhead and the earliest potential of sunrise in the east. Once the sun rose, the weekly market would begin. Farmers would be selling their turnips and carrots and cauliflowers. Bakers would be selling loaves and rolls that were even now turning brown in their ovens. The square would come to life in a way it never did on any of the rest of the days of the week. When Anne was young, her father always described market day as the most magical part of the week. But Anne knew that he was only half right. She was sitting on the bench waiting for the most magical part of the week. As the sun's rays struck the top of the obelisk, the stone stealer began to glitter and a cascade of sparks fell from its tip. The sparks bounced off the base of the obelisk and landed on the dewy grass, where they immediately took the form of puckles, two-inch tall creatures. The tiny creatures began to race around the square, gathering materials from nowhere and began to erect the stalls which would serve the market for the day. When Anne's father had first told her about the puckles, she hadn't believed him. Even at that young age, she understood the concept of Occam's Razor, if not its name. The village market was set up by the farmers, perhaps with the help of Mr. Williams, who was the closest thing the village had to a mayor. And then one night, well, one night or rather early one morning, Anne had woken up before the sun had risen. It had been summer and the promised warmth of the day seemed to call to her through the open window. She quickly dressed and climbed out of her window, slipping through the gate and wandered down Pond Street, not really clear where she was going or why. That wasn't true. Anne knew she had no destination, no agenda. She was just walking for the sheer enjoyment of being out in the early morning. And turning onto Swine Hill, she could see the tents and kiosks being erected on the square in preparation for the day's market. In the pre-dawn dusk, Anne thought the lack of light was playing tricks on her eyes. She saw the structures going up, but she couldn't see any of the men or women who she knew had to be erecting them. As she got closer, she realized that the tents were putting themselves up. Closer still, and she could see the tiny creatures who were doing all the work. By the time the first farmers showed up with their crops, everything was ready for them, and none of them questioned the setup. Ever since, Anne had tried to get to the square in time to watch the Puckles do their work. She wondered why nobody ever questioned the building of the weekly market. She knew that Mr. Williams and some of the village boys would assemble the tents in the evening, but it seemed that he assumed that the farmers had set it up just as they assumed that he did. The puckles chattered constantly between themselves as they worked, but it sounded like the whistling of birds and the chitter of rabbits, nothing that would wake a person or even draw attention to someone who was walking by. Anne found it extremely comforting and restful. Most days when the sun came fully over the horizon and the market was ready for the farmers, Anne felt more refreshed than she did on days when she slept through the night. There was always an energy among the puckles themselves. They knew what they were doing. They seemed to have be no wasted motions, yet at the same time, they appeared to be having a wonderful time. In the distance, coming over the hill, Anne could hear the first of the trucks approaching the village, still far enough away that she couldn't see its lights, but the sound of grinding gears carried in the still morning air. Glancing at the square, she saw that one of the tents wasn't properly staked, a mistake she had never seen the Puckles commit before. She rose from the bench and ran to the tent. She knelt next to it and began to work the stake into the ground, taking off one of her shoes to use as a mallet. With each hit, she, her, her, she, her attention seemed to be more and more focused on the stake, and it grew until it seemed to fill her field of vision. It's time to go. She looked over her shoulder and saw a man standing behind her, dressed in anachronistic clothing, as if he was part of an historical reenactment troupe. Time to go? Yes, the humans are coming. He pointed up Swine Hill, and Anne followed his finger to see the largest truck she had ever seen coming down the hill. I am human. He appeared surprised. Are you sure? If you're human, why are you helping us set up the market? I saw the truck coming. It didn't look like you. She looked around and realized the tents towered over her head. The obelisk seemed to reach to the heavens. She looked again at the man she was talking to and then glanced up Swine Hill. The truck wasn't enormous. It was normal sized. She, on the other hand, what happened to me? Comprehension began to dawn on his face. You're not a puckle? You're really a human? He looked, around, um, uh, he looked around, the first truck had parked in front of one of the booths. We don't have time, come with me. He held out his hand and as soon as she took it, he took off running, pulling her along. 
As they stepped onto the base of the obelisk, Anne was overcome by a momentary dizziness. When it was gone, she found herself standing in an untouched landscape next to the trunk of an enormous oak that had been split by lightning. Where are we? Exactly where we were. This is the obelisk in the village square. She looked around, didn't see the obelisk, the houses, the roads, the tents, kiosks, trucks, nothing looked familiar. No, it isn't. It really is, he insisted. We're just in a version of the world where the village was never built, where humans never appeared, really. No humans? I'm the only human in the world? Anne could feel panic creeping into her voice. I'm not sure you're human anymore. Not human? How could that happen? The dizziness was returning and Anne sat down on a rock, or perhaps a stone. She wasn't sure who or where she was, let alone how big or small she was. All she knew was that she seemed to be some latter-day Alice in Wonderland. We help humans all the time. Humans either ignore us or treat us like nuisances. I don't think any human has ever thanked us, certainly never helped us. Perhaps by helping us finish in time, you demonstrated that deep in your heart, there's a puckleness to you that overrides your humanity, and it allowed your true self to appear. I'm not sure that can happen. Can I go back? We go back each week to set up the farmer's market in the square of the humans. So next week I'll go back, perhaps I'll be able to return to normal? You turned into a puckle, so anything's possible. In the meantime, I think I'm going to have an adventure.